Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Nosa. I'm a junior doctor currently working in the UK in the emergency department. I'm currently a foundation year two doctor and I understand that we're expecting some new doctors on the wards in the next couple of weeks. I remember when I started my foundation year one job, I was really, really nervous and I can imagine you guys are probably a bit more nervous because you're starting during very, very uncertain times. But this is why I've made this video. I'm hoping to share my top 10 tips on surviving your first year as junior doctors and I promise you, you're going to find something helpful in this video, so keep watching. So guys, my first tip is take initiative, be proactive. Like, if for example, you needed some obs done or you needed a urine dip done, yes, the healthcare assistant and the nurses tend to do those things. However, sometimes they get really busy. You might you might find yourself just waiting around for ages for these things to get done. So just do them yourself. I mean, you can take blood pressure, you can check temperature, just do it yourself because that way things can get done sooner. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't do OBS often, but I'm just saying that if someone else is busy, just, you know, take the OBS yourself instead of waiting for someone else to come and do it for you. Number two, I can't stress this enough, guys take your breaks like you need your breaks i've heard the saying you're a better doctor after lunch can't go through the whole day without getting a break and you're entitled to a break so if you're not able to take breaks when you start your job you should definitely let your educational supervisor know asap because that should not be happening for you to take care of patients and give optimum care you need to take care of yourself first and that's just facts number three guys listen to the nurses like especially the experienced ones they know what they're talking about if you're about to do something and a nurse is asking you are you sure you should be doing that you probably should not be doing it okay um now obviously that is also the same with if you are not going to do something and they tell you that you probably should be doing it you should probably be thinking about doing it as well obviously no one is right 100 percent of the time but i'm just saying you should take what they say seriously and on board if they tell you they're worried about somebody you should be thinking about that patient seriously as well and you should probably be worried too i must say though this is more for the nurses that I experienced i find that you know a lot of the new nurses they're amazing they're caring and so on but they tend to panic a bit more like you know the new junior doctors as well it's just a given so i just realized that she's more as just as an experienced as you are 99 percent of nurses in general are amazing but you must realize too that sometimes you find some bullies as well and you should definitely not be bullied into doing things you don't want to do so i did say listen to the nurses right but i'm also saying don't get bullied into doing what you don't want to do by a nurse or anyone else when asking the nurses to do things for you the way you ask makes such a difference saying please make goes such a long way i've had colleagues that have had problems with nurses for ages and trust me life was not good for them now we're on to tip number four double check all your doses when started but i would advise that unless you're like 100 percent if there's any doubts in your mind make sure you check your bnf if you haven't already download the bnf app on your mobile phone no one expects you to know the doses even when you get more experienced yes i know the doses of like you know common things but there's still those things you always need to check on to my fifth tip using dr a b c d e this is like a lifesaver you should definitely be using it whenever you can i mean i don't use it all the time but i use it when even up to now when i just feel like hmm I kind of don't know what where to go with this or what's going on on to my sixth tip clinical guidelines you should be using clinical guidelines whenever you can as well every trust should have their own specific guidelines or managing different scenarios and i found that very very useful on night shift sometimes there's no guidelines for certain situations and there i always had this book with me on night shifts this is the Oxford Handbook for Foundation Program. I don't use it as much anymore, but I definitely, definitely found it very, very useful on my night shift. And if you feel like you could probably, if you feel like you would too, then get it. Why not? My seventh tip is do not be afraid to ask for help. People understand you're just starting up. People understand your new junior doctors. Even I, as a foundation year two doctor, I still, you know, ask for help because obviously I'm still training. So definitely, definitely ask for help. Before you ask for help though, seniors need to kind of feel like you've put an effort into thinking about what you're dealing with. So before you call a senior or before you go and meet a senior, make sure you have the patient's details, name, date of birth, hospital number, 
um, get some make sure you've written down your observations as well and just have done a quick rough assessment on what you're dealing with so you can effectively tell the senior what's going on and they can give you the appropriate advice ask 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 I'm always asking questions and it can be annoying sometimes but I'm like oh so why do you think it's this why did you do that you need to understand your seniors reasonings for things even not, not even just your seniors your colleagues there's some things you might have strengths in that your colleagues might not and vice versa so you should be sharing information ask questions make sure you're learning on the job you should try and escalate to your immediate senior first before taking things all the way to the consultant because some consultants get quite pissed off when you just call them it's like why didn't you call the registrar bonus tip but if you're trying to escalate to a senior just saying i am worried about this patient she kind of signal something in their brain to pay extra attention to what you're saying my eighth tip is to be honest and say when you don't know something sometimes you find yourself in positions where somebody might ask you to do something and you actually don't know how to do it so i'll give an example of myself um when i did urology the nurses asked me to try and take out a suprapubic catheter which is a catheter that's put just below the umbilicus to try and take out the catheter because she had struggled to take it out i had never dealt with one before it was a night shift so i just called the registrar told the nurse i couldn't i didn't know how to do it and he came over to show me and from then on i made sure i learned how to do that procedure and the next time i was asked to do it i did it with ease so yeah just make sure you're sane when you don't know how to do things because if you're just trying to attempt things blindly that's not really good for yourself or the patient my eighth tip is to make those lists with boxes if you're a uk medical student you probably already know about these boxes as well but it's basically like put like order a ct scan and you make a square box next to next to it if you shade half of that box someone your colleague would know okay she's requested that ct scan and if the whole box is shaded colleague would know that ct scan is basically so sorted so that's a good way to communicate with each other if you have like a general job list book with boxes and you shade your task as you go along if you want to be extra you can get those multicolored pens it would help you because you can kind of write in red what's really important and then the rest of it in black and then some in blue it's up to you how you decide to do it I had a colleague that used to like photocopying um, his list because he was so careless basically he used to always lose his list and obviously losing your list can just make you can just ruin your whole day because you're just like oh my god I don't remember what I have to do what I have left and all of that so it's up to you, you can photocopy your list and keep a spare one or get a multicolored pen makes things more interesting and makes you prioritize things again in your head a list is a must for organization My tenth tip is start engaging with your portfolio your e-portfolio early on you don't want it to pile up do things here and there when you can i've had colleagues that waited to the end and stress levels on a hundred i've got some bonus tips for you guys just hold on very very important as well make sure you book your annual leave early because people are very fast you might want to get some dates in and people are like oh that's gone that's on you can't take that day off so as soon as you start email your rota coordinator get those dates in asap another bonus tip document 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 everything document conversations document examinations document your discussions with the nurses literally your documentation would literally save your life and would also help the patient because documentation is so important for continuity of care another doctor needs to be able to come and see exactly what has happened by looking at your documents and also guys i know it's funny that you know people say doctors have bad handwriting but please just write legibly because it's just like stress trying to read these handwritings during night shifts like honestly i've had doctors that can't even read their handwriting and yes it's funny but it's also like seriously lastly make sure you maintain your social life eat well sleep well and trust your instincts you know your stuff you graduated medical school just smile be confident and you do great i wish you guys a lot of luck and i'm sure everyone will be fine i hope you found this video useful if you haven't subscribed to my channel please consider subscribing i would love to have you guys back for more videos take care bye